On the line, we do have my new friend, Rob Keys from Screen Rant. He was the you know the runner of this contest. He helped me out. He helped me with my travel arrangements, um, got me to meet some of these cool people, and showed me around a bit. Rob, how's it going tonight, bud? Rob. Hey, guys. Hey, Good Rob. Welcome to the show. How are you, pal? I'm awesome. I should let you guys know up front, I also shaved my balls for Hugh Jackson. Oh, <laughs> nice. <I'm with> you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I hope he knows that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to send him some fan mail. Well, now now that we just got intimate and personal, uh, you know, uh, you know, I feel like I feel like we already know you, Rob. I, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, I got a bro hug before I left New York, but I mean, this takes it a step further. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, yeah, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, so before we get into uh, you know more of uh, last weekend, just let uh, everybody watching and listening at home uh, just who you are and what you do over at Screen Rant. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for for you movie fans out there, uh, I've been sort of running ScreenRant.com or helping run it for nine or ten years now. Uh, I'm the longest serving person there, but the site started as like a tiny little blog back in the early 2000s. Right. And when I joined, it was like. I worked for free, essentially. Then it was like $5 an article. And Sean, I told you the whole story, but basically I dedicated um, my whole life, my whole personal life to this passion from the moment I finished school. And uh, myself and a bunch of hardworking, uh, cool people who still work for us uh, grew it to the point where it was like the largest independent uh, movie site in North America. And then we got sold to a company in my homeland up in Canada. And now I work for them as like the editorial director for their entertainment property. So that includes uh, Screen Rant and more recently, comic book resources which is another fantastic site if you like comics and movies and the cool stuff we we all love yeah we definitely share a lot of articles from both of those sites onto our social media pages as well and use you guys as sources because you know you are a trusted source in our eyes so we have to get our news for you guys um yeah so bill and i were actually just talking uh some canada stories from the times (laughs) that we were up there have you ever been to uh bear facts in toronto the strip club I have not. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you don't live too far, so you should take a trip over sometime. <laughs> I, I can't go back there though, because uh, I I owe about a hundred and forty dollars to a uh, to a French Canadian stripper uh, who <laughs> didn't really speak much English and. Uh, yeah, so I'm unfortunately probably not you, allowed you, back there. Did you dine and dash at a strip club? Well, no. <laughs> well, well, he, he lap danced and dashed. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that she took me up for a dance that was, you know, $20, and then it lasted, like, you know, 13 minutes, and then she was like, it's 100 you know. That's how they get you. Yeah, yeah well, the yeah. music just kept playing. I mean, like, you know. Like, geez. That's beautiful. Yeah. So getting back to this past weekend right. from the stripper <laughs> talk. Uh, so, Rob, we just played the audio from uh, my interview with Hugh Jackman. You got to interview Sir Patrick Stewart, Boyd Holbrook, oh, yeah. and director James Mangold. Um, yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about how those went and you know what it meant to you, not only as somebody in your profession, but just as a fan of you know their work, you know, from just being a fan of the films as well. Yeah, that's really it. Uh, I did try to separate myself between being uh, a quote-unquote journalist, which I don't think me and my team are. Uh, um, we're more analysts than anything else. But, I mean, the X-Men animated series defined, I think, who I am as, as a kid. I grew up with that. So, like, I think me growing up with all these things which are super popular now, from superhero movies to Star Wars, is kind of like uh, – uh, it's, it's why we're so successful because we grew up passionate about this stuff, and now it's what we write about, right? Oh, and so I was very fortunate. And Sean, I told you the story, but I was very lucky in, in that as part of what we do, we get to visit the sets of some of these amazing films. And uh, three, four years ago, I visited the Australian set of The Wolverine, which was also directed by James Mangold. So I was very fortunate you in that I had already met James dress. Mangold and Hugh Jackman, and I also interviewed Hugh um, – mangled another time when he was showing us some footage when he was uh, in post-production on the Wolverine. So um, I, I had like a, a very good banter with him, and, and he's super passionate, knowledgeable. And if you watch that interview when it goes live on ScreenRant.com this week, like you, you're very lucky in four or five minutes if you get two questions in because he will just take your question and run with it forever. And I wish – he's one of those guys you could talk for hours to because he just has so much film knowledge and, and ideas for what – like I kind of wish they would – it's, it's a shame this is the last Hugh Jackman film because I want to see James Van Gogh and Hugh Jackman make like 12 more, you know? Um, yeah. And I, after seeing this movie, it's easy to say that too. Uh, yeah, but but So the real special one for me uh, was meeting Sir Patrick Stewart. He was my first interview of the day. Uh, another thing I grew up with was Star Trek The Next Generation. My whole family loved like Trek and my mom just absolutely 
loves Patrick Stewart. So, Sean, if you couldn't go, man, my mom was going to take your spot. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Keys. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll make her listen to this, and, and she'll yell at you. But, uh, wow. yeah, so, so he was just great because, uh, uh, you know, Charles Xavier's a very cool character. He's played him for as long as Hugh Jackman's played Wolverine, and right. he had some very, very cool stuff. And he, what's interesting is that when, when you interviewed Hugh, he kept, like, I felt like he kept intentionally trying to remind you that this is the last time he's playing the character yeah. uh, that, that he's done. Whereas Mr. Patrick Stewart, who's significantly older, but just as wise and handsome, was saying, you know what? I would love to do more movies with Ian McKellen. I still want to play more X-Men films. Please, Fox, make more X-Men films with Yeah, you with guys the older had posted Charles. that article that he came out with the other day saying, you know, he, he doesn't want to be done with it. He wants to keep going with them. So, I mean, you know, who knows what's going to go on from here, but... I'd be all aboard seeing you know Patrick Stewart continue as Professor well, X. Patrick Stewart, I, I mean, if you follow him and and Sir Ian on Twitter, the two of them have this very eclectic bromance uh, that oh, yeah. takes place where they're always up to some type of you know uh, you know scheming activities and stuff like that, and you know, so I think that definitely transcends onto. Uh, onto the set where they have that chemistry. And I think, you know, yeah, you would like to see them kind of really play off each other and, you know, do something that has a little little more brevity to it. Whereas, uh, you know, as we're winding down here on the, uh, on the Fox movies with them, it's, you know, it's a little, you know, taken back. It's a little less involved. And, uh, um, you know, the fact that he wants to continue doing something like this, um, you know, I mean, th- Guys, you know, still still working. Let him work. You yeah, know? He's, he's very spry. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and Rob, I gotta say too, I, uh, I I'm a big uh, Star Trek fan as well. I know Sean's probably thinking right now, like, oh great, Phil there just said again. Star Trek. Yeah, he gets because, it every time with because our the last six guests <laughs> got derailed because of Bill bringing up Star Trek and you know went off uh, went off topic. So. Um, you know, I'd like to pick your brain about the uh, the Star Trek ser- uh, new st- uh, series uh, film, uh, but I, I do want to um, you know continue with Logan. Maybe we can circle back in a moment here. Sure. Um, but Rob, what what was uh, what was your thoughts on the uh, on the movie? I read uh, Sean's uh, spoiler review, so mm-hmm. you know you don't have to uh, hide anything from me. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. we don't we don't want to talk. No, no, no. I don't want to. No, I don't, don't want to talk about yeah. any of stuff like yeah. that. So I, I, but, I just want to. My let review him know. is yeah. posted to our social media pages and on our website as well. You know, the embargo did lift for that. What was right. it yesterday at four thirty, mm-hmm. Rob? Am I correct? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we're the, actually able to trade with Cuba again too, as yeah, part of that Im- yeah. uh, deal as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you do want spoilers, if you want to know what happens, you can go over and check out that article. I did a full write up on that. But uh, getting back to what you were going to yeah. ask, Bill, go ahead. Um, so, Rob, you know, you, you got to uh, screen this movie as well. I, I got some insight, uh, you know, after reading, um, you know, what Sean had to write. Uh, you know, where, where, do you, where do you feel like the, you know, the franchise, you know, uh, take, you know where, where do you feel like it's going right now? I mean, you know, Hugh obviously uh, reiterated many times, um, as, as you clued in, that, you know, he's really trying to let you know this was the, the last go. But, you know, do you really feel that that's the case? And do you feel like y- that the the X-Men franchise is is done in this avenue of, of Wolverine and, and uh, um, you know, Charles Xavier as well? Oh, man, that's, that's, a, that's a literally a billion-dollar question. Yeah. But uh, I'll say this. Like Patrick Stewart told me in our interview, you never say never. And right. if this movie banks half a billion, which it easily can, that's not Deadpool money, but it's fantastic mo- money for a, an R-rated action movie and an R-rated you know, Wolverine movie. Right. Uh, with the reviews it's getting, it's sitting at, like, what, 96% of Rotten yeah, Tomatoes? Yeah, I saw that today. How, and the fans love him. They finally told the story. Like, how can you – if, listen, if Ryan Reynolds, who's producing Deadpool 2, comes up to you and say, yo, Deadpool 2 sets up X-Force. This is who's going to be in the cast. We want you in it. Is Hugh Jackman going to be like, no, I'm going to work on something else instead? It's like, come on, Hugh. Really? How can you not do an X-Force movie as a supporting character as, as Wolverine? Um, that being said, who knows if they even want Wolverine in the X-Force. But um, I don't know. I think if it's just the reception is so positive, I, I think – I would not be surprised if he doesn't star in any more movies. I wouldn't be surprised to see him cameo in a few. Yeah. Um, 
given that we're seeing so many different timelines, you'd almost like have to see him cameo as part of the tradition, I guess. Right. Um, as for the future, I don't think Fox knows, man. Like the the Gambit movie, which I was very curious about, has been has been through like four different directors already. It still yeah. doesn't have a, a a green light. And then on on the X Men front, they're trying to do a couple of different things because, as you know, X Men Apocalypse was not exactly a home run for the studio. No, and so there's, no, it wasn't. So they're scrambling to kind of follow that up because they do love that cast and working with Fassbender and McAvoy. So they're making X-Men Supernova, or that's the working title. They're also making uh, a whole new team movie called X-Men New Mutants, and I think they want that to be like a new first class and hopefully launch a new trilogy. And, of course, they're going to run with a Deadpool Wolverine-style rated R films. Uh, at the very least, by planting like f- three or four different potential franchises, you know, one or two of them are land for sure, and they can run with those. And with these rated R movies being home runs, Deadpool and now Logan – they're like catering to a, an audience uh, of fans like us who grew up with this stuff, who are older, more mature, and want these mature stories and mature characters on screen that none of the other franchises are doing. DCEU from Warner Brothers and the Marvel Cinematic Universe are too afraid to deal yeah. with rated R material. So far, I bet that will change. Um, so Fox has that above everyone else right now, and that's kind of cool. I like that. And you know, Rob, I think what – I don't I don't know if it's Fox's intentions right now, but what I feel is working with the whole R rated movie um uh status going on is that obviously X Men has started to alienate uh the brand a little bit, you know, amongst uh you know, amongst fans and viewership out there. And I think that they're able to reel people back in by, you know, bringing R-rated uh, statuses back out to, you know, really kind of just, you know, amp up the the uh, the storyline in a sense, and you know, make it more adult. So then that way, you're you're putting these characters back in movies, and you're able to just you know hit the hit the fans with, you know, just straight action, you know, violence and you know, a lot of serious and gritty tone, you know, whereas, you know, before you had to kind of develop, you know, the the characters, you know, story arcs, how they play into each other, yeah, and, uh, you know, really kind of develop, a, you know, a timeline. And all that got messed up, um, you know, after X3 and moving into the, you know, to the oh, Origins yeah. movie and stuff, you know, so I feel like, you know, the franchise really... Uh, started to lose its sight of things and alienate themselves amongst fans. But this whole uh, R-rated status is bringing things back to, you know, to life where it's just like, let's just take these characters and throw them into the, into the fire a little bit and just, you know, let's just make it, you know, fucking awesome and fun. And yeah, I think it's hitting, you know, it, and it's not just the fact that it's an R rating. It's it's the mentality of like let's take our gloves off yeah. and get people who are super passionate and invested in these characters, which is 100% James Mangold, who's been working with with, with um you know with Hugh Jackman for two decades now, yeah. uh, and getting Tim Miller and 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 you know Rhett Reese and Paul Warnick and Ryan Reynolds who've been sort of attached in one way or another to Deadpool for a decade. And it's like let's just let them do what they need to do. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a 200 million dollar movie. Let them do whatever they need to do to tell that story the right way. And it's not about getting more curse words in there or, or, no. or nudity because no. neither of those movies rely on that. It's about telling a story that has actual character development that's truly standalone and doesn't need to rely on previous films or setting up other films. Right. Uh, and, and you get real emotion and real character relationships out of that. And that's something a lot of these movies, now that we get six, seven, up to ten of these per year, it's kind of lacking. So. Um, it's very, it's almost like the saving grace that Fox needed to kind of do that. To, otherwise, if they didn't, imagine they didn't, and Deadpool was rated PG-13, and it was nowhere near the success. They would have been afraid to make Logan rated R, and this franchise would be in the shitter. Uh, I apologize if I'm not allowed to swear. No, um, you, you swear you all are, you want. You are fully enabled to curse. Yeah, oh, we're awesome. an R-rated Perfect. show, too. So you guys <laughs> are doing what Fox is doing. You're doing it right. Yeah. So. <laughs> this saved their franchise because if they didn't and these franchises, they'd be screwed and they'd be under so much pressure to make deals with Marvel just yeah. like Sony did. And they'd be like, all right, guys, look, have the Fantastic Four and help us fix the X-Men because we're fucked. Um, but they 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 did it. Man. They, they launched two sub, they launched 
Deadpool is like the most money making X Men movie, and it was the movie no one wanted to make for ten years right. they, because they let them do what they want to do. And part of that, for sure, is the R rating. And I really do think that you know, for Marvel, for example, come Phase Four, like they're gonna see what Marvel TV is doing on Netflix, that more adult, gritty, realistic, grounded thing, and they're gonna see you know Fox hitting home runs with these quality rated R movies, and they're gonna be like, you know what? maybe we should do that Black Widow origin movie and make it rated R because she's an assassin who kills people, and that makes sense. You know what I mean? But honestly, um, could you really see Disney doing that? You know, their, you know their whole I, thing people, is to get all, you know fans of all ages, including you know they want the kids in there too, even if you know some of the sure, stuff isn't absolutely. really for Disney, them. Disney, no, perhaps, but Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige, sure. I mean, Disney owned Miramax back in the day. You like Tarantino movies? I mean, they, they right. did that kind of stuff back in the day, but here's the thing. If Marvel's able to produce three or four movies per year, they have to hit more audiences. Every movie, and Kevin Feige, who's like the boss of Marvel Studios and the super producer but on all their films, he says every movie has to do something new. We have to push these genres, give you a different experience every time, and eventually that has to mean they have to do an adult story. Yeah. Um, and these, some of these characters are adult. Like We still haven't seen the real Black Widow on screen. And the only way you can really do that is if it's rated R. Um, so I, I, I bet money that they do that in the next five years. We see at least one. Because why not? You have two giant PG-13 billion dollar movies. Why can't you have one lower budget one that's rated R? I mean, well, it's also, working for Marvel TV and Netflix. Also, they haven't really truly focused on, on a female lead yet for Marvel. And yeah, we're waiting for yeah. Captain yeah, Marvel. You know, but. Uh, she, she's owed. You know, Scarlett Johansson. I mean, she's, she's really been a tremendous piece in the whole you know, Avengers uh, timeline, and the she ties in that story. Like, if, if you didn't have her in those movies, the cohesiveness that travels throughout the MCU really wouldn't be there. And, I mean, the fact that her zipper comes down more and more <laughs> each time in every sequel, um, you know, keeps me interested. So, she's, I think she's owed, at this point, a R-rated you know, standalone movie to to really make the uh, the character stand out. Um, but at the same time, um, Captain Marvel is also going to be another one to look out for and see how uh, how they do that one as well. Definitely. Uh, also, Ant Man and the Wasp. That will be technically your first headlining female hero as you'll see in the MCU, yeah, uh, twenty eighteen. And then you have Captain Marvel afterwards. But Captain Marvel, you'll see first. Uh, in Avengers, she'll have an appearance there, but I think we get her origin story in 2019, and then I, I think no matter what happens to Black Widow, even if they kill her off in Avengers 3 or 4, you can still do the origin story prequel afterwards, yeah. and I think what you said is true, I mean, as an actress, she's one of the you know, most famous worldwide, one of the highest paid, most successful actresses, she carried Lucy a couple of years ago to make big money, she's carrying Ghost in the Shell, which is a very challenging adaptation coming out uh, next month, actually, and a hundred percent, she can carry a Marvel movie with Marvel's marketing power. They can launch. They can launch Ant Man for sure. They can do Black Widow. So I'd love to see them do that. Rob, what are you excited for um, out of the MCU coming? Um, you know, coming up in the next few years. And I, you know, whether if you have insider knowledge or not, um, <laughs> I'm just curious about what what things you um, anticipate. Um, you know, changing down the uh, down the road. You know, whether if it's your own guess or you know just uh, what you might be excited for. I'm just curious to uh, you know hear how you think the uh, the MCU is going to uh, change and play out a little bit over the next few movies that are coming out. Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I would love to see Fantastic Four. Yeah, I would love to MCU see them not fuck four. it up again. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing. I, to be honest, I don't even think Marvel cares about the Fantastic Four. No, I don't think anybody the, does. No. They want but, the ancillary characters. No, oh, I, yeah, exactly. And sure Rob, with, care about their villains. Rob, with with Fantastic Four, the thing that that that's you know been the fucked up part with them is that they're not they're not a headlining act. I think we have to just accept that they're not the team that they're not the Avengers, and yeah, you know they are a freak accident type team that got you know that's put together. What the way I see them being truly successful in the MCU is they need to be, you know, they need to be these low level grunt work type of uh, characters that, you know, that are like a Hawkeye that go in and, you know, are able to do some of the dirty work a little bit, you know, maybe introduce them, you know, at the same at the same type of tier that, you know, like Daredevil, Iron Fist and, 
you know, Jessica Jones are coming together in that sense where, you know, kind of, you know, in between a street level uh, type of, um, you know, uh, gathering that goes in and gets some of the, the grunt work done for the, you know, for the Avengers. What do you think? Uh, I think you nailed it. I think comparing to Hawkeye is a pretty good idea. So, so the way I see it, like if I were part of that decision making plan in Phase Four, yeah. Uh, and by the way, I mean, the, like if I were a guessing man, I think Marvel and Fox are already working together on this sort of stuff because there are no to, plans for yeah. Fantastic Four, you have to and be Marvel at this TV point. and Fox are already working together on multiple TV shows. Yeah, we have um, Legion that came out already. I know when we were in New York, you see, you said that you had already seen the first couple episodes, which was really cool. Um, yeah, and then there's the you know the currently untitled one, uh, with you know that's going to focus on the family who's on the run. Uh, there's supposed to be Sentinels in that, so mm-hmm. yeah, there's definitely already the collaboration between Fox and Marvel with the you know the TV aspect, and so you got to think there's some kind of reciprocity there for you know what's Marvel actually getting out of this besides you know getting their name on these products. You know, there's got to be hey, something oh, else going on. Hey, hey. And it goes beyond that because everyone knows these movies are just big commercials for the merchandise. And guess what's back in the merchandise? Hasbro's making X Men figures again. That's interesting, given oh. that they didn't have like the money for that. You know what I mean? Before, so for sure they're working together on something. And I mean, with Sony and and Marvel, they're they're going to do something special. I think for Spider Man Homecoming, I can tell you, I was on the set for that, and I think it's going to be a very cool, like fun character movie that's different. And I think that's what they need to do with the Fantastic Four. But to, to your question though, like. Yeah, I mean, Fantastic Four don't need their own movie, but they can sure be supporting characters in these larger event films and things like if there's – what's after Infinity War? There has to be some other massive event that's yeah. going to be cosmic in nature, and that's where you have the Fantastic Four. And these are the brilliant scientists. You add the Baxter building up beside Stark Tower in New York yeah, and all of your get wide the shots. Illuminati together. And exactly, which, which, by the way, Benedict Cumberbatch name-dropped the Illuminati when we were on set, and he's like, he's very excited for that in the future. So phase four, you start setting up things like that. You have, you know, you have Iron Man or some version of Iron Man and Cap. You have Black Panther, who can be part of the Illuminati. Um, I don't know what's happening with the Inhumans right now on TV, but potentially, you know, they could cross over. Um, but we do know that after Guardians 2 and going into phase four, there's going to be more cosmic films. It's not just the Guardians. The Guardians will have spinoffs, and there are many other cosmic characters, characters including – Captain Marvel, and that means cosmic villains, and that's something you might need the Fantastic Four uh, to help with, you know? So, yeah. uh, and and even if you want to give them a movie, they don't necessarily have to headline it. It can be the Fantastic Four and something else in a larger war, sort of like the Infinity Wars. But the Infinity War movie, um, which is shooting right now in Atlanta, that's not a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but they have a major role in it, um, the same way you could include Fantastic Four, you know, in a couple of years when they need to. So that's how I would do it. Yeah, maybe do like a Secret Wars or Kree Skrull War or something like that, Secret Invasion. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, oh, speaking of Marvel Fox deals, they also talked to get the uh, Ego, the Living Planet, into Guardians of the Galaxy. And yeah. We, so, and, and on the first the script for the first Guardians, they wanted to get the, the Badoon, another alien species in there, but Fox owns them. They couldn't get them at the time, but I wouldn't be surprised if they make more deals like that because Fox isn't using any of these guys. They're going to try to with X-Men Supernova and bring those characters to space and stuff like that, but I'm curious how far they're willing to go because if that doesn't work, then Fox continues for decades to hold on to many of the greatest, biggest, most dangerous villains in the Marvel Universe that they're not using, and that is a crime against us, the fans. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, they have to figure something out. Rob, have you ever seen Big Trouble in Little China? Uh, I have not, oh, but I bought no. it. I, what? I bought it. We've been debuting like exclusive art for like these art books for that movie and comics crossovers and stuff like that. I've been saving on to it, oh, um, but every weekend – of 2017, I've been Rob, traveling. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like shell shocked right now. I mean, uh, you know, I know you're you're, you're in games. charge of Screen Rant, the one of the you know <laughs> largest, uh, you know, oh, and it really pisses me off to no end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, ah, oh, Rob, I, I, have, I think I've never I, written an article about this movie, so I'm good. <laughs> all right, well, we're giving you homework. You're, you know, we got the rest of the weekend here. You're going to watch it. I want you to review it and share it with us, and then we can compare notes on it. I think that's sure. That, that should because be I, I uh, Sean and I were talking earlier about Ego, the Living Planet, and Kurt Russell, <laughs> and there is a um, there is a creature in um, Big Trouble Little China that I uh, had referenced and said, Sean, you know, it, it would be hilarious if Kurt Russell as the Living Planet was was this uh, creature, so you know it's a you know a, just a <laughs> you know small reference that uh, um, would be interesting. Um, 
But uh, speaking of that, though, I have to tell yeah. you though. So, so we ran our Guardians of the Galaxy two set visit stuff two weeks ago. So, and we have more interviews going up with that. But they would not at the last minute. They said, "Do not post the Kurt Russell interview because they're waiting for some big debut of his character." So, I, I would imagine in the very near future there is going to be some either a TV commercial or some video they release online featuring him, hopefully as a planet. Because I really want to see what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. And then we're allowed to run our interview. So I think just heads up, something cool on that front is coming. Okay. All right. We'll uh, we'll keep our uh, our eyes peeled. Um. Yeah. Well, well, we just have you for another minute or so. We're gonna let you go. You know, it's Saturday. I'm sure you got something something to do. But uh, <laughs> you know, you did mention that you go on a lot of set visits and things like that. What are some of the next couple ones that you have coming up, and uh, maybe you could uh, share some insider knowledge uh, to us? With? Um, tricky question. Uh, some I can't say I've been on. Uh, I, I can tell you ones that I'm hoping come up. I really, really want to visit the set of Aquaman because I'm so curious okay. about that and it's shooting in Australia, which is amazing. And I really want to visit the set of um, obviously Avengers infinity war, but as for what's coming up, we just ran the guardian stuff. We visited the set of um, alien covenant. So we'll, we'll be running about, I didn't do that one personally, but I sent someone to that. So we'll be doing that one in the near future. Uh, I just did one two weeks ago. I can't talk about. And Oh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I did do the uh, Spider-Man, uh, homecoming set visit, which is very interesting because it's a Sony slash Marvel slash Disney production, which is unheard of. So yeah, yeah. that was kind of a cool one to do. But uh, trying to think what else. I'm actually, I don't know. I'm actually staring at uh, one of our uh, little headlines here that we're going to be talking about, um, Alien Covenant. Um, you know, real quick, uh, how do you feel about um, you know Danny McBride and uh, David, David Gordon, Gordon Green, Green will be uh, writing the um, – you know, the upcoming uh, Halloween film. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like, so you heard the news, like their pitch, how it's not really like a reboot. It's sort of right. like a sequel to the first two films, yeah. Yeah. which, I mean, on one hand of it, like I, I like that they respect the material and that clearly they're fans because they yeah. really, they must have had a very specific and cool pitch. Right. Um, but then again, that also reminds me of what Brian Singer did with Superman, right? right. Where he came in and he's like, I'm not going to do a new franchise. I'm just going to like ignore Superman 3 and 4 and do my own version where Brendan Routh is now Christopher Reeves, you know? Yeah. And that didn't really work out. So I don't know. Um, who knows? I mean, all these, I think Halloween, sort of like the Saw franchise, is invincible yeah. and it'll come back in one way or another every so many years. So. I mean, sure. Why not? And, I'm and sure I, they have a cool pitch. Yeah, and I just realized I did a terrible segue uh, from uh, Alien Covenant to uh, Halloween, but my uh, my uh, <laughs> my uh, segue was uh, the fact that Danny McBride is in Alien Covenant. That's right. Um, and did did you say you were on the set for that? Uh, yeah, one of my main editors I sent to that one. Another uh, great trip to Australia I missed. But yeah. yeah. Ah. Um, you know, d we didn't really get much out of this. Do you? Do you think Danny McBride's going to be the typical like Kenny Powers type of uh, uh, you know, a personality, or do you think he'll be a, uh, you know, kind of like a, uh, um, like a regular person, you know, like a regular, <laughs> you know, I'm steering the ship here, uh, yeah, you know, type of guy. He's going to be like I think uh, like a hyper intelligent space trucker sort of guy, where it's <laughs> like he's taking it seriously because it's like a horrible shit is happening around right. him. But I think he's also going to have like that sarcastic humor that that he should have. Yeah. I think for sure he's some form of comic relief, but I don't think it's going to be out of place. You know, yeah. there's always a character like that in these movies. Yeah, I'm a big fan of him. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's good, and he's a smart. I mean, he's a, he's a he's actually like a genuinely smart like writer. So it's kind of cool. He's one of those guys like kind of like like Seth Rogen. You see them, and you don't think. Like, whatever, he's just a funny guy. But, like, no, these guys, like, produce, direct, write, they're smart. Um, so if he's invested something, it's, it's as a fan of the genre, like, you should probably pay attention to it, I would say. Right. All right. Well, Rob, we are going to let you go. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, yeah, maybe we can get you back on uh, sometime so you can share what you've been up to. Uh, good luck yeah. on any of your upcoming set visits, any articles that you're going to be writing. And uh, we'll sure. definitely yeah. uh, be sharing out your interview videos with uh, some of the uh, X-Men or Wolverine cast. Uh, you know, you said they come out next week. That'll be released. Yeah, right? we'll be punching them out daily this week. Same with some more Guardians of the Galaxy 2 stuff. I kind of held on to the interviews for that, so I posted some features instead. But this week's going to be good times for Marvel fans cool. as we approach the Logan release date. Well, so, guys, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, this is awesome. You guys are great. Rob, uh, uh, 
real quick, I'm going to uh, need to have you back on so we can talk Star Trek again soon. But, oh, uh, yes. Uh, 100%. Absolutely. But uh, we'll be keeping an eye out at, uh, you know, all the stuff you'll be putting out there, and we'll, uh, we'll share it to the masses. And, uh, you know, thank you for, for joining us today. Cheers. Enjoy the weekend, guys. You do the Thanks same. Lot, Take bye. care.